My final guest is the director for the German Marshall Fund's Digital Innovation and Democracy Initiative. She's a wealth of experience in communications policy and international trade and served as the U.S. ambassador to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development during the Obama administration. And I need to say a word for her. I used to work with uh, Karen Cornblue, Ambassador Corin Cornblue, years ago. And in 1999, in 2000, it's hard to think back to, you know, that's not that long ago. We did not know how broadband or being connected to the Internet was going to affect how lawyers worked, how households worked, how farmers could run their system, how small businesses could be online. And Karen Cornblue is one of the conceptualizers of what some of those pathways might be. So let me open this up. Uh, Karen, it's great to see you, Ambassador Cornblue. I guess my question to you is, are we at another inflection point like we were 20 some odd years ago with the coming of AI, AI, you know, 5G, AI, quantum computing, big data, where we don't know how we're going to be transformed? And I remember you were our architect of that thinking back then. Are we at that point again today? Uh, such a great question, Steve. Um, and yes and no. I mean, I remember back to when you were working on the Hill and you were thinking about supply chains and semiconductor security. So yes, of course, we're at an inflection point. Things have changed, um, but some of the under underlying issues are the same, and I think we may have neglected them. How are they? I'll, I'll just say how they're a little different and how they're the same. I think one thing we learned last week, if nothing else, is that what happens in the world of tech, what happens online, is not different than what happens in the real world, IRL. Uh, in real life, as they say, um, we saw, uh, you know, people who've been radicalized online sort of spilling out of our computer screens, uh, committing violence in the name of their conspiracy theories. Um, but we also see, um, you know, these technology issues that we may have thought of as siloed affecting our national security, our domestic health and competitiveness, uh, labor force issues. Um, so I think the thing we learned is, you know, what happens in tech is not separate from what happens in the real world. We can't uh, isolate it. We can't silo it. And that's why I think it's so great that you're having folks from all these different uh, areas of policy on to talk about tech, because you, you have always been somebody who mainstreamed these issues. And I think that's, that's incredibly important. Well, Karen, you had a, a big Washington Post article yesterday on uh, America's debilitating information disorder. Um, and I guess I have a question about digital hygiene. You know, how, how you know, in this world of, of competition, you know, the, the president has popularized the, the notion of, you know, fake news. But, but I guess the question is, we now see so many different balls of gravity where people see and feel things so differently. Is this going to be a resolvable issue, um, do you feel, down the road? It's very, very hard. We've waited a really long time. And I think part of it, just you know, pulling forward that same idea, I think part of it is we thought uh, tech was unlike every past, uh, and the internet was unlike every past technology, like unle unlike every other industry. And we need to reach back and remember that we have norms and rules that we've developed over time to um, make sure people have free expression, but also to make sure they're safe, also to protect civil rights, also to protect consumer uh, consumers, also to protect um, you know uh, campaign finance transparency. So we have to update a lot of that uh, for the internet, and we have to really, I mean, as a country, we have to do more than media literacy at this point. We need deprogramming. You know, we need to really invest in our civic infrastructure um, from broadband, as Mike uh, mentioned, uh, to how are we using in our local institutions, libraries, uh, to how are we making sure that our public media is funded so people have a source of information. And my bet is once uh, the Biden administration comes in, they're going to focus on this very much as far as COVID goes. And I think that's starting tonight, that they will almost do like an FDR where he did those uh, fireside chats on the radio and told people to get out their maps and follow along with what was going on in the war and collect aluminum foil and, you know, have a victory garden. I think that they'll be sharing information to help people get on the same page and level set. And they'll be probably giving people things to do so that they feel that this is all a joint endeavor. And I think that kind of building of civic muscle is going to be incredibly important. 
You know, Karen, one of the things you've been doing in the last several years, which I've really enjoyed, is you pull these salons together for the Council on Foreign Relations, the German Marshall Fund, you know, bringing together a disparate set of not all on the same page, you know, thinkers and thought leaders and doers in this IT space, and you poke them. And I guess you're in a safe space now uh, at, at think tanks. And so if you were to poke the federal government and you, you were to poke the IT sector, what do you think both of them need to do better to get some of these um, these equations on our digital health and our and a, and a positive digital um, future, right? Oh, great, great, great question. I think on the government side, we need um, we need tech literate people. You know, they don't need to be tech natives, but they need to be bilingual in whatever it is, whether it's consumer protection and tech, or foreign policy and tech, or labor and tech. Um, I remember when I was ambassador to the OECD and we were working on internet issues, some of the uh, economic folks at the State Department said, well, I don't do technology issues, I do economic issues. We can't have that kind of thinking anymore. And I'm sure they don't any longer at the State Department, but we really can't have that kind of siloed thinking. The FTC, uh, as the, its own chairman has said, doesn't have the capacity, doesn't have the training to be able to really enforce its rules in the tech sector. So, you know, beefing up enforcement, beefing up training, bringing in experts, using all kinds of creative ways to bring people in for shorter time assignments, but we need to have people who are really bilingual uh, in, the, in, the, in the federal government and mm. in state government, local governments. And then I think for the industry, you know, I think the whole ethics conversation is very, very important, but it needs to be taken extremely seriously. It cannot be optional. Uh, everyone needs to be thinking about ethics, and I think they need. I think the tech industry uh, needs to think about what kinds of guardrails it's willing to uh, live with in terms of regulations. I think there's been some talk of acceptance that there could be some, but I think it's really time to put pen to paper. And just, just lastly, um, Ambassador, when you were ambassador to the OECD, which sits in Paris. You dealt with ambassadors from around the world that were there. And I guess my question, you know, it's going to it's a big question, but I needed a short answer is, you know, what when it comes to looking at patterns of other nations getting some of these equities right, are there models out there we can learn from that you were impressed by? Or is everybody drowning in these same kinds of issues? You know, one of the things that I want to learn a lot more about is hmm. Taiwan. Taiwan has done an incredible job of getting a lot of its government online, of combating disinformation, um, of getting people really tech literate. So I think there are these, you know, Estonia is doing amazing things. And you talked about digital identities before. I think there are these isolated examples of countries that are really excelling. And we need to take out the microscope and really learn from what they're doing. Well, Ambassador Karen Kornblue, former ambassador of the OECD and now with the German Marshall Fund, I wanted you as the anchor for today's program. You, you answered, you came, and I really appreciate your, your important work and thinking today. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Well, that brings us to the end of our program today. A big thank you to the Information Technology Industry Council for its support and to all of you attendees for joining us this discussion. For those of you who missed any of these conversations, and they were great, we're going to have the video up from the event on our website up shortly. And a quick programming note, we'll be back at 1 p.m. on January 28th for the third and they say final event, but I don't believe it's final until it's final because I want to keep doing these uh, in this series. We're going to be speaking with members of Congress and tech experts from Intel, Siemens, and other leading companies about the role technology can play in protecting our planet. You do not want to miss that one. I'm Steve Clemens. Be well.